So when Webflow says that you can now generate apps inside of the app without doing any code at all, what does that actually mean? In this video, I want to take a look at what you can actually do with Webflow's new app generation AI and see what kind of apps we can actually create without writing any code. How far does it go? Does it actually replace you as a designer? And a bunch of other doubts that I have that hopefully I'll be able to answer in this video. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is Webflow's new app gen feature. You have a small window here with a little chat box where you can actually explain what you need from your app. And if you have a bland design like I have here, where you have a conference or you need to create a filter or some sort of login or something a little bit more complex that would take you hours and hours and hours, the idea is that with Webflow's new AI that you can actually create this sort of feature just by writing a couple of instructions for the AI. So what we're going to do in this video is going to be three things. Number one, we're going to take a look at the actual functionality here and I I think this is a cool video because we get to see something that's pretty new. Yes, this has been available for Cursor and Figma Make as well, but now that we have it inside of Webflow, it makes you feel like you can actually expand on the websites a lot. Number two is we're actually going to create a selector for this conference website. So here in my CMS, we have a couple of different collections. We have sponsors, workshops, conference talks, and then artists. But these are all just simple. They're not actually populated on the website in any place. So what I want to do is I want to create a selector. I want to be able to make a filtering system where we can actually select the workshop that we want to have from these CMS items. And then number three, we're actually going to test it. We're going to see how it scales and all the different things that we would normally do with a typical website. So the first thing we need to do here is obviously go into the app gen tab. So what would you like to create? The first thing that we need to say here is I actually need to speak to it in plain English, nothing crazy, but let's go ahead into the plus here, go to collections. And I want to take a look at workshops and I want to select conference talks and artists, sponsors, maybe not so much. Okay. So I want to create a selector for this conference, include workshops, conference talks, artists, and also be able to filter by difficulty of the talk, who it's for, etc. All right. So something pretty simple like that would take me a long time to do with, uh, I don't know, the FinSuite filtering system, being able to filter to search through all these things. So I'm going to click go or the little arrow there, and it's going to generate this structure for me. Now, while this generates the cool thing about it, actually, it's done right now. OK, so we can see here the dev server, we've got terminal deployment and then the actual JavaScript that it's going to be creating for us. We also have a small chat here, and this is where I say that it feels a lot like cursor or something like that, where you have a chat where we can actually ask it to do more things. Like, for example, we'll get to that in a little bit, but this is what we can see from the get go. And I think that this is an incredible addition to Webflow, and I wish that Framer also had this. With this addition, we can now create filtering so much easier. We can create, I don't know, any type of advanced creation just got a lot easier from a filter, from a map, from I'm guessing that they're going to add a lot more features like doing GSAP with this and who knows what else. Now, some of the use cases that they talk about is something like a pricing calculator or I don't know, something that's kind of simple, but it's kind of crazy to imagine what this could look like in a couple of years time. Now, anyways, it generated the code for me. We can see all the different pages that it generated here. For example, source code, we have the UI, all the different things here. So this looks like it's actually going to be done. So if you go into preview, we'll see what it generated for us. So I'm going to close this here and now we can see what we have here. So first thing that we notice is that it pulled all the styles from our regular app. So our variables here, we have colors, I'm just going to X out of this. We have the colors, we have everything that we're using for our site either way. Let's go to typography as well. So we just have like a pretty extensive typography scale and it's going to be using all of these different variables, which is pretty amazing. Let's go ahead and see what we can filter by. So I'm going to go with beginner. Maybe there's nothing beginner, nothing intermediate, nothing advanced. Okay, there's a couple in advance. So we can see that it created these filters for us, but maybe it's not populating it as much as we would want it to. But we see that we have three tabs here. We've got conference talks, workshops, and then speakers. So these are all the different speakers that are going to be speaking. Great. And we can see who is actually connected to this. So a small addition we could do here is, for example, for the workshops and talks, add the profile picture of the speaker 
instead of the icon. Great. So now we'll let it do it that. And after this is done, we're going to see if we can actually deploy this onto our current website. I'm not sure what the actual capabilities right now is because this is clearly still in beta, but it's pretty incredible to just imagine what we're going to be able to do in a year's time, a week's time. I don't know how, how fast these guys are, are adding to their to the platform here, but this is just amazing, as is already. All right, so it's telling me that it's done. We go over here and we see that the profile picture has been added. I can see that the aspect ratio is a little bit, a little bit weird there, but I think for, for what we've got going on here, it's pretty good. So we can see that we can filter all the different audiences, all the different locations. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty insane, I think. Yeah, anyways, so from here, we can now go ahead and deploy this. So I'm just gonna click deploy and it's gonna ship with speed completed. And because th this is the very first time that we're deploying it, it's gonna take a little bit longer. The more you deploy it, the, the smaller the changes are, it's gonna be a little bit faster every time, but because this is the very first one, it has to take all the information and host all that. All right, so once that's done, it gives us this link to actually check on the deployment, seeing how it's doing. And again, just because it's the very first time that we're deploying, it's gonna take a little bit to go into the Webflow cloud. But after that, we can go ahead and publish this. And the interesting thing is that this is actually its own page. So here inside of the apps, click on that little wheel there, we'll see that this has its own path. So if we want to connect this to the actual, I don't know, the actual website, for example, this view button here for view uh, schedule, we actually then need to connect that to its own URL. So we can go ahead and do that. So we're getting the notification that our app has been generated. So we can see that this is a live site here, a conference selector. So let's go ahead and actually connect this to our app. So I'm just gonna go back into design. I'm gonna go to view schedule, click on that little wheel. And for now, I'm just gonna add this URL to our link here, and we're gonna publish it to the actual site. And we're gonna see that once we have the, the live site, this view schedule button here is now connected to this new deployment that we created. So the next step for this would be to actually connect this to some sort of payment system, some sort of, I don't know, like Stripe, some something related to booking so that we can actually test this end to end. Another thing that I'm seeing here is that the scroll bar here is being turned on and off depending on if we actually have anything to scroll. And of course, here we do, here we don't. So it's turning it on and off. Another thing I want to test is going to be the inspect here, going to the multiple devices, and then we can actually just go with responsive. We can see what we've got here. So it's scaling amazing, amazingly well. This is a pretty simple layout, of course. It's just a grid. It'd be weird if it didn't scale, but it's great to see that it actually can scale properly and it's doing everything that it needs to be doing, basically, which is fantastic. So what's my take on this? Because right now I see that this is an incredible advancement with something that we should be using AI for because there's a lot of silly things that don't need AI, but I feel like this is something that we can use AI for. So in my opinion, the cool thing about this is that, of course, we have just generated an entire filtering system with a couple of minutes of text. I remember when I first started Webflow and I was trying to create a filtering system for my simple SaaS that I wanted to do called Use Tesla World. It's actually still up there. This is one of my very, very first websites that I ever created. So so no judgment for me, please. But you can see here that, let's see, if we wanted to go to Tesla's, we didn't even upload a filtering system because I was like 18 and we didn't manage to make it work. But that was like seven years ago. So it's crazy to see how far this has come. And there's no need for the FinSuite component system. There's no need for, for anything with that. And even if you did have that, I believe that it would add on top of it because you already have your variable set. It's going to take everything that you already use and expand on it. It's not going to create something completely random that doesn't match your styles or your style guide because that would just be kind of useless. So it's amazing that it's able to create on top of everything that you've already built. Now, a couple of the limitations that I see right now, and I'm sure that in a blink of an eye, it's gonna change because all of this changes so fast. But something I wish that we could actually do would be, for example, to be able to edit this stuff as if, number one, it was a simple Webflow UI. Now, I'm sure that is a lot harder to do than I can imagine because some of these changes would be a lot faster for me as a designer if I'm just going in and now that it's created this entire filtering system i'm like okay great it created all that hard work for me but there's a couple things that i want to just change like for example these profile pictures need a little bit of a touch-up right so then do i really need to add in more text to do all of that or 
I mean, this code, sure. But if you don't know code, which I'm guessing is going to be the majority of the people that are using this, because that's the whole promise of Webflow, then yeah, I, I just think that that would be an insane addition to this. Number two is going to be actually being able to add this or create this as a symbol, as a component, and then slotting that within the individual layout because right now this is its individual URL path, which is great. But imagine if we could add this just as part of the website and it doesn't need to be its own app. So maybe this function here works better for a standalone page, like a dashboard or I don't know, some sort of, I mean, I guess this, right? But if what if you wanted this just to be part of the website, then that's not available just yet. But I mean, from what we have here, this is absolutely insane. The fact that we can already do this and I'm just gonna test this, the, the search here for maybe this one. So stylized stylized art versus photorealism. Okay, cool. So that, that exists, right? That's right there. You can tell that this is gonna be insane in a couple years time. And I'm really curious to see how it's going to advance, how many things we're gonna be able to actually do. If anything that I just mentioned, if we're even gonna be able to do all of those things or not, I'm sure we will. But anyways, I'm curious to see what you guys think about this kind of function in Webflow. Are you gonna use it? Are you not gonna use it? Do you think it's a gimmick? Let me know what you guys actually think because I actually am curious and I do want to know. So as always, if you leave it in the comments, I will reply. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. 